This is a summary lecture of descriptive statistics. We're going to look at two topics in uh, two separate videos. One, we will look at um, measures of central tendency, and in a separate video, we will look at measures of dispersion. But both of those videos together will contribute towards descriptive statistics. So, what is descriptive statistics? Just as a quick reminder, descriptive statistics focuses on really allowing us to take a data set that we've collected from a sample and describe it. So if we're talking to somebody, a friend, um, a professional, a manager, anyone, that we could describe the data and have that data make some sense to the person that we're talking to. So this is what we're going to learn. And this is a summary lecture, and we will show you the calculations in a separate video. So we want to know a bit about how we compute the mean, median, and mode. These are some of the measures of central tendency. We want to look at measures of dispersion so that you understand how to compute those as well. And then uh, what we call a Z-score, which is basically a way of expressing uh, the difference between the average of a, of a group of values and other values in that group and we express it in a particular fashion. I will explain that as we come to it a little bit later. And then to help you understand a concept called the empirical rule. So let's do with the first part which has to do with measures of location or measures of central tendency. So when we collect some data, if we were to actually plot the data on a graph we will tend to see that numbers would cluster. So let's say we were to take uh, Walmart employees, for example, or let's just take any of us, says employees or, or, or St. Mary's employees. If we were to look at the annual salaries and we were to graph that on a scale, what you will find is that uh, the numbers are spread out, of course. Maybe the lowest salary, let's just assume that the lowest annual salary is based on a minimum wage. Um, and what if that were, say, $15,000 a year? And then you have perhaps the president of the institution who makes the most money. I'm not sure what that is. Let's say $250,000 a year. But as we put all of the salaries of the hundreds of employees at St. Mary's on that scale, we will see the numbers distributed between the lowest value and the highest value. But where are most of the numbers? Are they towards the bottom, around the fifteen, twenty thousand dollar range? Or are they near the top, near the two hundred and twenty five or two hundred and fifty or 175, where are they? Or are they somewhere in the middle, around 75,000 and so forth? So we want to sort of get a sense of where are the numbers in that distribution, in that range. And we could use some measures to help describe where those numbers are. So the most popular is the arithmetic average or the mean that most people are, come, are, are aware of. We talk about the average of a midterm, the average of a final, the, av the batting average of a baseball player, um, name it. Uh, so averages are quite common. We, we're quite uh, familiar with that. The median has to do with the number that really is right in the middle. And then of course the mode uh, is, a, is a value that allows us to identify the numbers that occur very frequently. So, so if we were to be able to plot all the numbers, which ones occur most frequently, we call that the mode. And a weighted mean has to do with another way of calculating uh, an average, particularly when we group the numbers. When we group the numbers, um, and we create categories. So we'll say, for example, uh, salaries between, how many people have a salary between 15,000 and 20,000, and then 20,000 and 30,000, 30,000 and 40,000, and so on. If we wanted to calculate the average salary, then we use a technique called a weighted average, okay, or weighted mean. So we'll, let's, we'll get into that uh, shortly. Just as a quick reminder, I talked about parameters and statistics early on. A parameter 
is what we observe in the population. So if we computed this value, the average salary for St. Mary's worker, and we took all of the workers at St. Mary's, then that would give us a parameter, the average for the St. Mary's population. But if I took a random sample of 50 employees and computed the salaries and then computed the average, then in that case, I would be dealing with what we call the sample average or the sample mean, which is a statistic. That statistic is an estimate of the population parameter, and we've mentioned that earlier. So how do we calculate the population mean? Essentially, we just collect all of the values in the sample, we add them up, and we average them. We divide it by the number of values that we have. So if we were looking at the average salary of 50 employees, we would add up the annual salaries and then divide it by 50 and that would give us the average for that sample. If we did that for the population, for all the values in the population, we would refer to it as a population mean. If we do it for a sample, then we call it the sample mean. The summation sign that we see here um, basically uh, says that we're adding up all of the values, and then we'll divide it by the number of values that we actually have. Okay. The median as I mentioned earlier, is really that value in the center. It tells you half the values are above it and half the values are below it. So to find the median, what we tend to do is to take all the values in a sample or in the population and we order them. So if you put the values in order, then you just find the values that are in the middle. Okay. Now, whenever you, if you have a, an odd uh, number of values, then it's easy to find what the median is. The median is that number in the middle. So, for example, if we had 11 values, the median would be 6 because we would have 5 on one side, 5 on the other, and that 6th value would make 11. If we had, um, say, 110 val no, 101 values, then the 51st value would be the median. But what happens if we have an even number, 100 values? Then what happens is that we must now place the median in between those two middle values. So value of 50 and value of 51 would be the two middle values, and we'll place a number in between them, and that would give us the median. Okay? So the median is just another way of describing the distribution of the data, telling us that half the numbers are above it and half the numbers are below it. All right? We will go through the actual demonstration of how to do those, so I won't use the summary video to do that. Um, the data, if we were to actually plot all the data in a sample or population, the data would have a shape to it. And so if we were to plot the frequency, how often the values occur, and uh, versus the values themselves on the x-axis, then we get a particular shape. If we have a long tail towards the right, we see that our data is right skewed. And right skewed data means that you have a few very large values in your data set. So, for example, if we have a few employees at St. Mary's making large sums of money, over $150,000, that's a very few, and the bulk of the folks are making somewhere around $40,000, $50,000 then that would be a skewed distribution. Now, you could also be left skewed if you have a few people that are making very little amounts of money. So what if you have a few people that are making $5,000 a year, 10000 Well, they're part-time employees, more than, more, likely, more than likely. So in a case like that, uh, and if the bulk of the values were somewhere around 80000 90000 100000 then that would be a left skewed distribution. You have a long tail towards the left. And then if you have a symmetrical distribution uh, where um, things are nicely balanced, you have the tail on the right and the tail on the left are the same distance from the median or the mean, then we call that a symmetric distribution. All right? It's symmetrical. It's like a bell, a bell-shaped curve. And that's where that term bell-shaped co curve comes from because the shape of that distribution looks like a bell. Uh, all we need to do is to attach the handle to it, and then you have that bell. Okay? 
So I've already described um, a number of these measures. The mode, as I said, is the value that occurs most frequently in the data, and it's not affected by extreme values at all. Uh, the mean generally is one of the best measures and most popular ones, as we said. The median is used often, particularly when you have skewed distributions. All right, when you have skewed distributions, the mean tends to be affected by the extreme values, but the median tends to be less so. So as a result, we tend to use the median when we have very skewed values. Because what happens is that if you have a few people making fairly large sums of money, when you average their values in the mix, it makes it look like the average is fairly high. Uh, for example, that's, that's, a, that's a problem that you have with countries when they calculate the GDP. You have a couple of very rich people in that country, but the bulk of the folks are actually living at the poverty line or below the poverty line. In a case like that, and that happens a lot in developing countries, you know, the GDP might look reasonable, but the reality is that the distribution of wealth is not a good distribution. So the median would be a better measure of where most people are, okay? The uh, weighted mean is if we apply some weights to, uh, because we're not treating every value as being of equal importance, but if we wanted to apply different uh, weights to different values, then we determine what we call a weighted mean, all right? Uh, so... Uh, an example of that is, uh, let's say we had values for sales over the last five weeks. Um, if we want average sales and we treated each of them equally, we would just simply take the five values, add them up, and divide by five. But if we wanted a weighted average, we might say, let's weight the more recent values a little more heavily because maybe that's where uh, we're trending towards the most recent values. So we would not give each value the same weight. Now, in the regular calculation, because we have five values, the weight on each of the values would be one-fifth, right, 20%. But if we wanted a weighted average that was different from that, we could say, let us weight the most recent value 30%, then the next one 25%, then the next one 20%, 15%, right? 10% uh, and so on, so that we put less weight on the older values and more weight on the more recent values. That gives us a weighted average when we do that. Okay? Percentiles and quartiles. Uh, percentiles will take our data and divide it into 100 parts. And so the top 10% would be the, 10, the 90th percentile. So bottom 10% would be the 10th percentile. We could talk about the 30th percentile, which basically means the point that allows us to see the bottom 30 and the top 70 percent. So percentiles um, allow us to describe our distribution, but by dividing it in a hundred equal parts. Quartiles, if you think of the word quarter, which is 25 percent, so there are four quarters in a whole, so quartiles will divide the data into four equal parts, okay? And so the first quartile, would the bottom of that would be the bottom 25%. The rest would be the top 75%. The second quartile, now that's really at the middle, we would have 50% above and 50% below. And the third quartile would mean that there's 25% above that value, 75% below it. All right? So we could see that right here. So quartiles, again, just allow us to describe the data by dividing up into four equal sections. But quartiles and percentiles are related because the first quartile is the same as the 25th percentile. The second quartile is the same as the 50th percentile. And the third quartile is the 75th percentile. So those things are actually quite related. Okay. So just a quick summary of the descriptive measures of the center, what we call measures of central tendency. We use the mean, the median, and the mode. All right? And the median, we said, is typically used when the data can be skewed. If the data is not very skewed, then the mean makes a, a much better measure 
the mode also is quite useful because it tells us where the numbers that actually have the highest frequencies in the data set. Okay. In our next video, we will continue with measures of variation, which looks at not just where the values are located, but how they are spread. So the study of spread in a distribution is called measures of variation or measures of dispersion. And we will do that in our subsequent video.